Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady. Where Karens keep making the mistake of thinking people are employees when they're not. And in this episode, Karens are getting embarrassed left and right, guys. I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So this is more of a yes, I work here, just not what you think story. First off, I'm a 34-year-old female, and I work as a school crossing guard. You know the look. I have a bright yellow vest and a big red sign. Even better, I want a matching yellow reflective hat when I embarrass myself during my first training demo. Thus, I'm all kitted out. So just remember, the key color here is yellow. Now recently, some big companies started installing fiber optics beneath the ground near the school. And by near, I mean drilling and destroying the sidewalks, like the ones I cross at. Like the ones I'm literally posted on, and I have to dance around cones to not fall into holes. So naturally, there's a lot of reflective cones, blocked off areas, and most importantly, dudes in orange vests and hard hats. Anyways, it's a hot mess. The kids are confused, the parents are irate, and I'm running my butt off, but we're getting through it. The rush was hectic, but we found our rhythm, and the crowds start to thin. Then, this one Karen parks in the bike lane, and halfway in one of my crosswalks, and right where the dudes are digging up the crosswalk. I.e. the worst place possible. Now, thinking she's just a mom, trying to pick up her kids, I rushed over, hoping I looked friendly. And I say, afternoon ma'am, I'm afraid I have to ask you to... And before I could even finish my sentence, Karen starts screaming in my face saying, You are seriously bad at your job. That catches me off guard, and I say, um, come again, ma'am? Karen says, I've been watching you, and you are doing it wrong. People could get hit because of you. Now at this point, I'm beginning to panic because I'm very alert, but maybe I'm off my game. I start reviewing the few minutes that had passed, wondering if I made any mistakes. I've been covering my three corners fine, I let cars go fine, and I managed watching cars go into a turning lane that was now used for oncoming traffic without anyone dying. But I'm not allowed to direct traffic, so I'm thoroughly confused. So that's when I say to Karen, I'm so sorry, but could you elaborate? And before I could finish my sentence, Karen says, I don't want excuses. I want you to do your job. You're supposed to let a certain amount of cars go at a time. And you're not even trying to keep the kids off the road. Then I see my late stragglers approaching. And by this time, I just wanted to ignore the lady because she's not making any sense. So I begin to move away so I can cross my kids. And this Karen, this scrawny beanpole of a lady, grabs my sign and she rips it out of my hands. And I'm thinking, no one grabs my sign. Karen then screams at me saying, I'll direct traffic myself since you're useless. I then start to catch on and I tell her, ma'am, please give me back my stop sign. I'm just trying to cross my kids. I'm not part of the construction crew. Somehow, Karen heard that, and by now, a group of grade fives who are sweet kids come running over to see if I'm okay. Even parents are starting to call over to see what's going on. Karen turns white, and she lets go of my sign. Karen then says to me, You work for the school, not the construction company? I then clutch my sign, saying, Yes, ma'am, I work for the school. At that, Karen says, Oh, well, you shouldn't wear the same vest. How was I supposed to know? I'll have to go have a word with the principal about this. It's very confusing, you know. Again, I'm in bright yellow, the crew's in construction orange. I then look at my vest, then at the two workers, and then back at my vest. The whole time, I was trying to be subtle, and then I forgot that grade 5 kids are not. And one of my favorites, Matthews, scoffs at the lady. He then says, uh, lady, she's in yellow. Are you blind? They're in orange. Even five-year-olds can tell them apart. And yes, I love this kid. At that, Karen blinks once, just once, and then she turns around and runs for her car. That's it. She just basically runs from a sassy kid who told her straight. Guys, that is one great thing about kids, is they don't have a care in the world. They will tell you straight. But that does have me thinking, guys, like, what if Karen was colorblind, and the whole time to her, they were all wearing the same colored vest? But even if she was, guys, and she didn't admit it, there's no reason to be rude, to the point where you just rip a stop sign aggressively out of someone's hands. 
Yesterday, after finishing up a grueling shift at a restaurant I worked at, I just remembered that I had to swing by a store for some items before going home. I did contemplate on going home to change out of my uniform, but I figured if I went home, I would be too lazy to leave again. My uniform consisted of a polo or button-down shirt with khakis and a name tag pinned to my shirt. I drove to the store, and as I was walking in the store, I'd take off my name tag and put it in my pocket so people wouldn't see a name tag and think I worked there. My name tag also said the name of the restaurant. So I'm browsing the store for the particular items I wanted, and this lady's just staring at me. I was looking at her through my peripheral the whole time, and she wasn't moving at all, just staring at me. I then got weirded out, so I turned towards her so I could walk past her. And as I was walking past her, she gives me a disgusted look, and she says, Excuse me, do you know why I'm looking at you? I'm looking at you because I need help. And you just walk right past me. Am I seeing things? How dare you? Now, being absolutely tired from all the stress from my own job, I just reply, uh, the reason I walked right past you is because I don't work here, ma'am. But the woman was obviously too infuriated to believe me at all. She then says to me, I don't need you to make up excuses. Now tell me if you have some more tuna. I was tired, hungry, and ready to take a nice nap at home. So I wasn't gonna let this lady impede me from doing so. I just snap at her and say, look lady, I already told you I don't work here. Even if I did, you should not just stare at someone expecting them to help you, and then get offended if they don't. I then remembered that I had my name tag in my pocket, so I take it out and I show her and say, Look, I work at this restaurant, not here. Now please let me get the things I want and I'll leave. As soon as I showed her my name tag, she became quiet, but you could still see the anger and rage in her eyes. I check out and go home. All this happened yesterday. Fast forward to today, because it doesn't stop there. This morning, I was a few hours into my shift. I was serving customers near the front, and my manager just happened to be with me at the time. All of a sudden, the lady walks in, the same lady who was yelling at me yesterday. Immediately, I think, this is a coincidence. She must be here to eat because there's no way she'd actually follow me here. Then I remembered showing her my name tag, which also had the restaurant's name on it. So I'm praying she didn't come here looking for me. The woman walks to the front desk, and she looks at my manager and says, Are you the manager? He replies, Yes, I am. She then says, Well, I want to talk to you about your employee here. She says that pointing at me. She then goes on to say how much of an inconsiderate and rude person I am, and she told him what happened at the store. She then said to my manager that he shouldn't have an employee like me working here, because I started swearing at her, dropping F-bombs left and right at her. My manager replies, I'm sorry you had that experience, but I'm not responsible for anything she does outside of working hours. He then gives me a look of, I got your back. And the lady just yells at both of us saying, well, I'll have you know, I've never been here, but I've always heard good things about this place. I was going to make a reservation here for my 60th birthday. But I'm never eating at this place that lets people like her, pointing at me again, work here. She then storms out of the building, hopefully never to be seen or heard from again. Guys, it's always funny how people think they have more power than they really do. Like really, going to someone's work to complain about them being rude to you when you saw them outside of their workplace is so stupid. And the fact that she just lied and was like, your employee was dropping F-bombs left and right. OB's manager should have told her, Well, you're coming here to stalk my employee, now get out before I call the cops. But lesson learned, right? Never let a Karen know your real place of employment if you're in a situation like this, because this might happen. So I kind of forgot this happened a couple of years ago, but it all came back the other day when I was talking with some friends. The backstory is, I'd quit working to attend school. I used to work at this small, yet very popular restaurant where I was working full-time for about a year. And just to set the scene, there's a nice public park right in front of the university I attend. I was taking a break from studying, and I was having a yogurt and some sort of unhealthy pastry, when this old man sits right next to me, like so close our thighs were grazing, in a park with plenty of benches. I mean, really, there was plenty of space on the bench we were sitting on. But the guy just smushes right up close to me. My instinct was immediately like, yep, I gotta go, this is creepy. So I stand up to leave. But he grabs my forearm and he gently but strongly pulls me back down on the seat as I'm getting up, just staring at me in the face. 
my half-eaten pastry falls to the ground, which F you, dude. And now I'm beginning to get scared, but not too scared, since there was no shortage of people around, as it's university campus. He then says to me, hey, you're Jen from the restaurant. The guy knew my name and all, which at that moment, I don't know if that was a good or bad thing. I say to him, yep, that's me. And I immediately recognize him as this rich D-bag regular who kept people waiting in line to tell me and other employees about his fishing trips and how big his catches were and about his fancy cars and homes in the Hamptons. And I remember it's the Hamptons because he never let us forget it. He then says to me, hey, so what are you doing? Taking a break from work? The restaurant was a couple of blocks away. I say to him, no, actually, I quit six months ago, school and stuff, you know? He then says, no, 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 I saw you two days ago. I talked to you about my recent fishing trip. I say to him, well, that wasn't me, I haven't stepped foot in that place in ages. He says to me, no, I saw you two days ago. You took my order and then we talked about my fishing trip. I just say to him, dude, I don't know what to tell you, maybe there's a new employee who looks like me. He says to me, no, I saw what I saw. Are you trying to tell me what I saw? I talked to you. In my mind, I'm thinking, no, you didn't. And what poor employee have you been calling my name and refusing to learn theirs? I say to him, you know what, I really gotta go now, but it was nice talking to you. I then stand up to leave, and he grabs my arm, and he pulls me down again. And now I'm fuming inside, because one, I was just reminded about my pastry that was on the ground. And two, because this a-hole thinks that he can put his hands on me twice now, and thinks he knows better than me where in space and time I was existing last week. He then says to me, you're not going until you give me that damn napkin. You spilled yogurt on me. And that really, really did me in. I just pulled away from his grip, let the napkin drop to the ground because I'm a vengeful a-hole in situations like this. He then says to me, excuse you? I said for you to give me that damn napkin. Did I tell you to drop it? At this point, I'm pissed off and I say to him, I don't need to effing give you napkins. You're not my customer. And even if you still were, I would be off duty being here. Now get your damn hands off me. And guys, he's genuinely shocked that I'm speaking to him this way. The guy's eyebrows go way up high and everything. In retrospect, it was kind of funny how out of touch this person was. He then says to me, Jen, I'm gonna have a word with Mary, the owner, about this. I won't be disrespected by minimum wage employees. Now you will apologize or I'm not going back to that place again. I just say to him, yeah, cause you're keeping that place afloat all by your lonesome, right? And yes, I do get wordy and snarky when angry. Anyways, I'm ashamed to say that after a few more minutes of talking to a wall and me trying to convince him that I haven't worked there in six months and him calling me a liar, I got out of that situation. I think it was a day or two later that Mary, the owner, sends me an email trying to laugh it off along the lines of rich people, you know what I mean? She then told me that she would be delighted if I came back to work because that idiot keeps asking about me. And the guy really did go to the restaurant and shout, I need to speak with the owner. Get me the owner. Your 21 year old employee was rude to me. So yeah, the post ends right there guys. And that was a weird creepy encounter, right? And really, there was no reason for OP to have kept entertaining that guy for as long as he did. Like, pull away, throw the yogurt at him, and start walking. You owe him absolutely none of your time. A few months ago, I was in my local pub. I work there for a few hours most days, so I always have a table reserved for me. Also, where I live, minors are allowed in pubs before 5 p.m. After 5 p.m., it turns into an adult-only kind of deal for the evening. Having been a regular for more than five years, I'm quite friendly with the staff and regulars, and often customers do mistake me for the manager. I actually have a few other good stories which happened in there that I'll try to post up. So it's about 4.30, and I'm typing away, writing a new story, when one of the regulars asks me what I'm working on. There's only like seven customers in the pub, and we chat back and forth for a few minutes. It's not too loud, and it's not shouting. One of the bar staff was joining in as it wasn't busy. The next thing I know, there's a woman standing in front of me. A Karen, as I come to find out. The woman says to me, Can you please stop shouting? In a very snappy manner. I say to her, I'm sorry, what? She then screams at me saying, You are shouting. 
It's disturbing my sleeping baby. I just say to her, uh, I wasn't shouting and there's no need to shout because it's not even that loud. She then says, well in that case, you're talking too loud. My baby's trying to sleep and you shouting keeps waking him up. Move somewhere else. I'm just confused and Karen keeps going on and she says, move somewhere else. Or you should leave. I tell her, look, you realize that this is a pub, right? And Karen says, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. You need to leave or get me the manager. I tell her I don't have a manager. And at this point, I'm getting annoyed because I need to get this written by 5pm. And her tone's becoming more and more irate. Also, the baby's now wailing about four tables away from us and nobody's tending to it. I then say to Karen, I think your baby wants you. It's crying. She then says to me, don't you tell me how to parent. First of all, you did this by screaming. He's crying because of you. And secondly, don't you dare call my baby an it. You are an it. A staff member says, I think you need to calm down now. Karen asks if they're the manager and the staff person says, no, the manager's not here. Karen then points at me and says, I want to speak to his manager now, so make it happen. At this point, everyone's getting loud. That's when a customer chimes in and says, we weren't shouting. And Karen says, nobody asked you. Everyone shouting is upsetting my baby, so everyone needs to shut up. The staff member says, I think he's more upset by you being loud, ma'am. And Karen basically screams and says, I'm not being loud. The woman then says that she's going to complain about this on Google reviews and that she's going to tell my boss to fire me. Now I'm about to lose my lid and I say, look lady, first of all, I don't have an effing boss. I'm a freelance journalist. And at the moment, the only story I have is that you are crazy. And secondly, I don't care if your baby's trying to sleep. I don't come to his daycare or whatever to drink. So why would you bring your baby to a pub? where it's loud and have him sleep here. She then screams, F you, go to hell. Meanwhile, the staff tells her that she has to leave. And the woman did leave. She didn't complain on TripAdvisor, Google reviews, or on any other review site that I could see. I only wish I hadn't gotten annoyed as I did with her because I understand being a new parent can be hard. But also F her. The staff told me she sat there for hours and she only had a soda water. Entitled Karens are the worst, right? Like no common sense whatsoever to take your sleeping baby away from loud noises. But instead, start screaming louder than everyone in the place that others should be quiet. And this person comments, My wife one time told me to watch my language because there was a few children nearby. We were in a brewery that had a large tap room, and some parents decided to go have a few pints and bring their kids with them. I responded much as you did, OP, something to the effect of if they don't want their kids exposed to cursing, maybe taking them to a place where everyone's an adult and drinking is not the best plan. Exactly. But we all know how entitled people are, right? They do what they want and expect everyone to cater to them. Alright, so last week I finally made up my mind to dress nice. I wore brown khakis and a button-up shirt. My hair was a little unruly, but I managed to get it mostly under wraps. I'm also able to drive again after 5 weeks out of surgery, so that's nice. I drove the 20 minutes to town to spend a Safeway gift card I got for Christmas. So I go in and I had this compulsion for something salty, but without being soft. My taste buds wouldn't accept chips, crackers, or anything else that turns to mush. And that's when I see it. Beef effing jerky. This stuff is so stupidly overpriced, it's like $15 for a 230 gram bag. But I'm not spending out of pocket money so it's all good, what else was I gonna spend it on? I take 3 packages since said gift card was 50 bucks, and I'm in this almost primal state of hunger so I'm ignoring the world outside this jerky. As I walked away, I looked down and apparently I grabbed a flavored variety. And I'm thinking, no, original or not at all. I then turn around, put them back, looking for the right bags. At this point, I'm basically tidying up the whole damn section, which is all mismatched to hell and back. By the time I get it sorted and do find what I wanted and stand back up, I accidentally bump into a very irate woman. I jump a little and I say, oh sorry, it's just a little ridiculous trying to get what a guy's gotta get, hey? 
The woman immediately blasts back, Are you effing stoned on the job just because it's legal now? I've been trying to get your attention, but you ignored me because you have the effing munchies. What's the policy for workplace drug use? The woman's hollering to anyone who might overhear her that she needs the manager, and that employees are doing drugs while at work. She then rips my beef jerky out of my hands, continuing to berate me. I'm just more in shock at this moment, but I finally settle on this expression that basically says, Okay, stupid, let's see where you take this. That's when one of the higher-ups, I'm assuming the manager or supervisor, comes power walking down the aisle. And before she could even finish asking what the problem is, she's already being interrupted by a verbal assault. Karen starts calling her to fire me for being stoned on the job, and she's being a bitch. The supervisor or whatever is totally befuddled by what she's hearing and trying to make some sense of it. I finally tell Karen to shut up for 10 seconds, and I say, look, long story short, I'm buying food and she thinks I'm a pothead employee here. I then try to be dramatic and yank my jerky back, but Karen's got a death grip on it all. I then continue saying, and she won't let me have the jerky I wanted to buy. The manager basically tells her, ma'am, give him the food. Karen then says, why? So he can take it to the back and share it with you other pothead employees? You're all losers, you know that? Manager again tells her, he doesn't work here just because he's not wearing sweatpants and a dirty t-shirt doesn't mean he works for us. Karen just loses it and she says, don't you cover for him, you pothead. He was putting everything away on that shelf. Manager tells her, you know what, I think I'm just gonna tell you to please leave. You're making a scene and harassing other shoppers, now get out. Karen screams, I'm not getting out until you fire him, right now. Manager replies with, don't make me call police because I will. Karen then starts marching out of the aisle. Now I wish she tripped as she was in heels, but I'm being petty with this thought. The woman was still clenching my jerky in her hands when she left, swiping things off the shelves as she was going. At that point, security grabs her and they called the police. I didn't stick around long after that, I just grabbed my stuff and left. There was no free jerky, no discount, and nobody even apologized that I had to go through that with her. It does make me happy though, at the thought of knowing that she was gonna leave in handcuffs. And the thing is, like, the woman knows she could have left without being arrested, right? It just boggles my mind when some people go throwing a tantrum and start destroying things when they don't get what they want. Like, just leave quietly, move on with your life, why make things so complicated? And for the record, just because someone's looking to buy food doesn't mean they're high and have munchies, Karen. But we all know Karen logic, right? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's in our slash entitled People episode, where a Karen decides to destroy OP's home just because OP doesn't obey her orders. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.